In this adventure, I'm going to take you on a hike I took up to Bassett Peak, checking out an old B-24 bomber that crashed up there in 1943. We're going to hike through Ash Creek in the fall here with great colors, uh, getting a glimpse of the bomber um, that unfortunately crashed, killing 11 people. Good morning. Another adventure. We're heading for uh, the Galeros, uh, hanging up a trail called towards Bassett Peak. There's an old World War II B-24 bomber crashed up there in the 1940s. Pretty remote part. It's in southeast Arizona. It's going to take us about, I think, a little over two hours of driving a lot of dirt road uh, to get to the trailhead. And then uh, we'll see how far up we go. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to go to the top of Bassett Peak. It's more of a scouting mission. Um, but it should be fun. Hopefully we'll see some great fall colors uh, on November 16th here. So uh, at the hell, uh, higher elevations, we're hoping to see some fall foliage. Let's check it out. As I mentioned, this is in Southeast Arizona. The Galero Mountains are actually a uh, pretty remote set of mountains. The Bassett Peaks on the Southern end of those mountains, the highest peak in those mountains. We're gonna come in from the east side known as the Ash Creek Trailhead and hike you these beautiful fall colors. So Bassett Peak is actually north of Wilcox, Arizona in southeast Arizona. Uh, the last part is dirt road. You actually go through a bunch of farm type fields uh, north of Wilcox as you can see here. Uh, give you a feel for what the roads look like to get to Ash Creek trying to see how far up the mountain we get. The beginning of the dirt roads, as you can see here, are pretty decent. We could actually drive pretty fast. As you further up the roads and get closer to the Galero Mountains, the roads become less traveled. I think we saw some hunters with their trailers parked for a bit there. Um, but then we end up getting to this gate, which is actually the trailhead. It gets pretty crazy after there, almost needing ATVs to get further into the area. But you Plenty of parking. Saw a few people camping here later as we came out. Uh, we ended up taking the trail 287 here. As you can see, you end up walking some of the road. Depending how far you get in, uh, depends on how far you're going to have to walk to get back out. So uh, if you got a lot of clearance of four-wheel drive, you might be able to get in quite far. Yes. As we hit the trail, you can see the creek here was dry. We had a few pockets of water here in mid-November. Mm -hmm. But the fall colors... And Ash Creek here in the canyon were beautiful. Um, just amazing little place to be. Uh, not too steep. We ended up running into some old uh, tanks. I'm not sure what they were using those for. And there was a water line. Check out these turkeys we saw. Amazing uh, wildlife that I uh, was not expecting. Those turkeys are pretty awesome. As we hiked through the bottom of this canyon, the first couple of miles, two to three miles, fairly level, not much uh, elevation gain, uh, lots of trees, foliage. I highly recommend coming here in mid-November uh, if you want to catch the fall foliage and all the yellow and red leaves. Uh, we kind of caught it, I think, peak season here in mid-November. Uh, lots of leaves on the ground, uh, pretty amazing little spot. Not much in the creek bed, as you can see here with water running. You will see a black line that runs down through the canyon. You can almost use that as a finder to uh, figure out where the trail is going. But look at the leaves on the ground. It's just, just an amazing uh, experience to hike through this little canyon um, and enjoy the scenery. Eventually, the trail begins to start climbing. Uh, not much, uh, like I said, early on in the trail, but near the end here, we do start getting some elevation before you climb out of the canyon. Pretty amazing trail in November. The trail is finally starting to go up after about three miles. Around. 
At the far end of Ash Creek, I took a picture of some of the leaves, give you a flavor for the colors of the leaves. And at the very end as well, you'll see this water dripping out of the spring. There are some uh, concrete uh, containers here that I guess at one point someone had used for water. Uh, but then the trail rapidly begins to climb out and you get a good view of Bassett Peak. As the trail climbs higher, you get out of the trees and you start losing the shade as well. So make sure you got plenty of water if you're going up here. You can see Bassett Peak up there. You start getting some great views of the canyon that you hike through. Um, but Bassett Peak looms off to your south as you climb this ridge uh, to get up onto the saddle. Still a ways away. As we made our way up to the ridge line, we ended up stopping for a quick break. I brought some apples and crackers and cheese and grapes along. Um, pretty cool spot near a rock here. They had some uh, gap underneath it that one could sit at and enjoy the peak off to the south before climbing to the ridge where you'll encounter another trail and some trail signs are very weathered. Can you read the sign? We're on the saddle. Peaks 1.4. I came along the ridge. Hiking along the ridge gives you a reprieve from the steepness of the trail. You actually pick up the view of the B24 crash here as well. See the metal right there. It's the old B24. Can't quite get over that peak. Pretty sad to think 11 people lost their lives in this crash. Uh, you can definitely see the wreckage from the ridge. After looking at the wreckage for a bit, we continued along towards the peak. The trail becomes very overgrown. It becomes steep again as you get closer to the peak. So on top of the ridge, you get this rock cairn. That's the trail up to the summit. It's a little bit of a bushwhack. And it takes you up there. Almost there. You gotta look for the rock cairn just off the trail and get on the top of the ridge. Otherwise you'll walk right by the peak. If you're looking for that summit you gotta bushwhack the last 10 minutes or so through these bushes off the trail to get to the summit uh, check out all trails or whatever you're using to use as your gps to find that summit or look for that rock cairn i say and climb up to the summit the 360 degree view on the top is amazing you can see forever out towards the rincons to the west and over towards uh, mount graham and safford to the east you can see forever, ever out to the distance. So, uh, the registry is at you underneath that big flat rock. You can see the can here that has people signing it. Uh, pretty awesome. Put your name on that registry. We then started our head back down, trying to beat the sun and uh, get to the trailhead before darkness. Remember how to get off this mountain here. already so we got a boogie to get out of here before it's too dark even though I was back on the trail it spots it's very very overgrown as you can see here you're almost bushwhacking Crazy the views. Lots of loose rocks. You wouldn't want to fall in some of these spots. Check how steep this place is. Not the place to fall.
That's a neat up, man. Spires are in the sunlight. We gotta get out that canyon. As we start to lose the sun here. It's the peak we came from an hour ago. Sun was setting fast. We were actually in the shade here coming back out. It was kind of a pleasant sight to see Ash Creek and the fall forage down below us knowing that we're getting our way out of this place. Not sure what animal this was. What do you think? Leave a comment in the descriptions. Almost out. About five o'clock. Over 32,000 steps. Over 33,000 steps. Great hike, a lot of fall colors. Get to see the records from far. Too steep to get down to it. Got to uh, the peak, so and we're gonna get out before dark. Thanks for checking out my channel. To my next adventure. Thanks for being here.